Nope, you don't need to know Spanish to move to Mexico. If that's the answer that you were looking for, no need to watch more of this video, but if you want a more nuanced understanding, then keep watching. I'm Brighton. My wife Kat and I moved to Mexico in 2021 part-time. Last week we had some American friends visiting. I picked them up in Los Cabos where they spent a few nights and I brought them over to La Paz where we live. Neither one of them spoke any Spanish, so it gave me some insight into where you'll struggle if you don't know any Spanish when you move here. Let's start with location. As I mentioned, I picked up my friends in Cabo at a resort. Cabo is a place where everyone speaks English. At the airport, the taxi cabs, hotels, shops, restaurants, pretty much anywhere you go on an average day, you won't need Spanish. This is true of any tourist town, of Puerto Vallarta, Cancun, Sayulita, and the tourist areas of big cities. And other towns where expats have been living forever, something like Ajijic. But outside those areas, don't expect to speak English. I live in La Paz. It's the state capital of Baja California Sur. Outside the tourist strip downtown, very few people speak English. So depending on where you plan to live in Mexico, that will set the level of Spanish that you need to learn. I think location is probably the most important factor when it comes to learning Spanish. But my guess is that if you don't speak Spanish and you're not a cartel member, you're probably not going to be attracted to Fresnillo. Even here in La Paz, there are a number of expats who don't speak Spanish or are just starting to learn. One problem is that when you first move here is when you'll probably need Spanish the most. For instance, to transfer the phone service into my name, there was just one person at the phone company office downtown who spoke a little bit of English, and that person was in a different department. The person helping me would work on something for 15 minutes, then call over the other guy to translate for a couple minutes before moving on to the next task. Similarly, at the government-run electricity office, there was one woman who spoke English, but there was still a lot of confusion, and I ended up going to that office eight times before getting the electricity into my name. The water office, definitely no English spoken there. The good news is that there are local Mexicans who are bilingual who will help you with all of this. You might spend 5 or $10 an hour to hire a young person to help you. I hired the cook from my favorite restaurant to help with a few phone calls. Speaking of phone calls, even if you understand basic Spanish, there's a good chance that you won't be able to understand a phone conversation. And sometimes saying, habla más despacio, por favor, doesn't result in any change. If you're talking to someone from a large national utility or bank, you can probably get an English speaker on the line, but often it's not as easy as press two for English. You need to get through the directory in Spanish, then ask for an English speaker once you have a human being on the phone. You might be signing a lease for an apartment. That will be in Spanish. My advice would be to have someone bilingual check that for you. I have a video about Blanca Coral, who is a resource here in La Paz, but you can find someone like her in most places. If you have a bit more budget, you can work with an agency that specializes in working with expats to find an apartment. I'll have a video about that soon. But overall, the best deals are reserved for those who speak fluent Spanish. You can also have someone help you with immigration if you're giving, getting your permanent or temporary residency. The folks at the INM office in La Paz did not speak English and my poor Spanish resulted in a couple of extra visits before we got it right. One group of people I found to always speak English is doctors, so that made me feel very comfortable. Also veterinarians. Even in a place like Cabo or Puerto Vallarta where everyone speaks English, you can get away from the tourist area and find the real Mexico. And if you're looking for the real Mexico, you probably should speak Spanish. If you want to get some amazing chili rianos at a local restaurant, grab a taco at a roadside stand, or shop for your groceries in a local market, a bit of Spanish goes a long way. And menus outside tourist areas are likely to be in Spanish. You can use your phone to Google Translate a menu just by taking a photo of it. And you can even use Google Translate to communicate with the waiter. And Mexicans are very patient. But it's also good to know some keywords like tocino, pica or picante, and arachera. And I found that there are two types of Spanish spoken in Mexico. Spanish I can understand and Spanish I cannot understand at all. And the reverse is too, true too. I speak two types of Spanish. Let me give you an example. There's a pool supply store that I go to. 
There is one woman there who speaks English. I was trying to explain a problem I was having in English, and she called up a repair technician to help. He didn't speak English, so I explained to him my problem in Spanish. When I was done, he looked at the woman who spoke English, and she repeated exactly what I said in Spanish. He understood her Spanish, but had no clue what I was saying. I found that when people are used to speaking to expats or other folks who speak rudimentary Spanish, these people can communicate in type 1 Spanish. They drop the slang, use more simple tenses, fewer direct and indirect pronouns, and then slow down and enunciate. It's the same thing I do when I'm speaking English to someone who is just learning. But folks like the technician who only speak to other Spanish speakers and haven't studied a foreign language, they don't understand how to help a gringo out. Another experience where you might want to know some Spanish and also might want to pretend that you don't know Spanish is if you get pulled over by the police. It's really great if you understand what they're saying to you, but you feign confusion and keep repeating in simple Spanish phrases like, dame mi multa, por favor. Getting into an in-depth argument with the police is never a good idea, no matter how much you want to practice your Spanish. So the more Spanish you know, the more rich your experience will be living in Mexico and the easier life will be for you. Now, how do you learn? Some folks love the app Duolingo, but it didn't work for me. I have a tutor online two hours per week. You can learn Spanish on YouTube. Kuru Paul has great videos for that. There are local and online group classes. You could come to Mexico and do an immersion course where you live with a local family and only speak Spanish for a week or two or longer. The gist is there are a lot of options. You may need to try a few to find the one that's right for you and your budget. But the sooner you get started, the sooner you can pull the plug of living in the States or Canada and start enjoying the slower pace of life south of the Rio Grande. Here's a Spanish lesson with Kiru Paul, and up here is a tour of a house a couple from Seattle bought in Mexico, and they moved here full time. They're still learning Spanish. It's easier than you think to move to Mexico.